Hi, Paul Sackers, Good News Broadcast, speaking to Dr. Stephen Wilbiat. Hi, Doctor, how are you? I'm good. I'm uh, excited to share some exciting new results from the American Heart Association with you. Okay, well, it sounds like we have some good news here. The doctor uh, has been involved with a tiny TIMI study investigator and cardiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and we're going to talk about the uh, stuff with the American Heart Association and uh, some results from a landmark head-to-head -head study comparing Prasergro and, help me here, Plavex, I guess, uh, and uh, to be unveiled at the uh, AHA annual meeting. Okay, tell us what's going on. Uh, well, this is a study comparing, as you mentioned, two, two medications. One is a new medication uh, called Prasergrel. The other is a uh, established medication called Clopidogrel or Plavix. Uh, these are medications that are used uh, as blood thinning medications to help to prevent blood clot formation in the heart, which is the cause of heart attacks. Uh, we uh, evaluated in 13,000 patients who were having a heart attack or a threatened heart attack the use uh, of either of these medications. And what we found is that the new medication, which is a more powerful uh, blood thinner, uh, resulted in a reduction in major heart events, uh, including heart attacks, uh, of about 19%. Now, what this translates to in real terms is a reduction of 23 heart attacks for every 1,000 patients treated with this new medication compared to the standard therapy. So we think that this is really uh, an impressive benefit, and we're very excited about it. So this isn't one of those statins, right? I mean, this has nothing to do with the heart maintenance. This is uh, if you actually have a problem. Well, so this, uh, this is a medication that is a, a blood thinning medication. Uh, it's used uh, in the treatment of the acute heart attack when there's blood clot formation, and it's used after a heart attack to try to prevent uh, the recurrence of one. The statin medications are medications that lower cholesterol, are also extremely important in patients to prevent heart attacks uh, and to treat after heart attacks, but they're diff very different types of medicines. What happens to the blood? Why does it thicken? Well, it's a, it's a complex process, but what happens is that people develop uh, plaques in their arteries. They develop growths inside the arteries. And what then happens is that these growths crack open. The inside, these, uh, inside them is uh, fatty particles and things like that. When that's exposed to the blood, it's a foreign substance, and it causes blood clotting. This isn't supposed to happen, of course, but when it does, these blood clots form in the arteries in the heart, block the blood flow, uh, and that causes a heart attack. So there's a lot of research, a lot of uh, very basic research, looking at what the mechanisms of the cause of this are. But what we're talking about here today is once this process gets underway, what we can do to try to slow it down and to try to improve uh, the outcomes for the patients after this begins. Well, do we, uh, I mean, we catch the person when they're starting to have this, uh, this problem? I mean, the, it's, not, it's not just a heart attack, they get a heart attack, or this is something that they use while, while they're having a heart attack? Well, when, many times uh, for people who have heart attacks or threatened heart attacks, uh, when they come to the hospital, uh, we do procedures for them where we uh, put uh, balloons into the arteries of the heart and try to open those, uh, open those up. When we do that, that's, uh, there's a need for medications to support that procedure to try to prevent uh, recurrent blood clotting. And that's what we're talking about here is for people who are in the midst of a heart attack or immediately following a heart attack, using medications to try to support them through that process. And you also put stents in uh, people's uh, arteries as well, right? Correct. And I, stents are, uh, for, your, uh, for your viewers, these are um, structures within the arteries uh, that's, that help to keep them open. Now, there is a potential downside to these stents, which is that these are foreign material. As they sit within the arteries, they also uh, form a risk for blood clotting. One of the most interesting things that we saw in this study was that compared to the standard medicine used uh, to prevent blood clotting in stents, which again is Plavix, we saw more than a 50% reduction in blood clots forming in these stents. This is the most dreaded complication of these stents. So this was a really striking finding, something we were surprised about and excited to see a substantial benefit in patients who had stents. Uh, don't they have something such as uh, coated stents? Uh, so there are coated stents. and. These uh, are more uh, often called drug-eluting stents. These are stents that give off uh, drug medications. What those drugs do is they prevent the overgrowth of the, uh, of the artery, but they don't prevent blood clotting. In fact, there have been some reports that suggest that uh, these drug-eluting stents are more prone to clotting. 
so uh, the importance of blood thinning medications for patients who have received those uh, is, uh, uh, is extreme. When you do a, a study like this comparing, you know, different drugs and so on and so forth, how many people do you uh, test and, I mean, these are, uh, what kind of people are they? Well, so this is a, this is a very large study. These, uh, uh, we looked at more than 13,000 patients uh, who were either having a heart attack or a threatened heart attack. And in order to do that, uh, this is a study that's uh, conducted very widely. More than 700 hospitals uh, enrolled patients in this study. The types of patients who were included uh, are patients either who have known heart disease and were having a new heart attack, or patients who were having their first heart attack or threatened heart attack. So these are, are patients with uh, either known heart disease or newly established heart disease. There's something in here in the background setting of aspirin therapy. Well, what does that mean? That means that uh, the standard therapy for patients who have these types of problems is that you start with aspirin. Uh, aspirin is a medication that also thins the blood, but somewhat weakly. Uh, current standard of care is to add to that a second medication, Plavix. And that the reason for this um, research study that we were talking about is to try to understand whether a new drug, this drug Prazogrel, which is more powerful than the Plavix drug, results in better outcomes, and we think that it did. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, when they say aspirin, do you suggest aspirin for everybody to have every day? Well, I think that the, the current recommendations are not for everybody to have aspirin every day, but for patients who are at risk uh, for heart disease. And these uh, include, in general, uh, men who have more than one heart disease risk factor, like high cholesterol, hypertension. It's something you really should discuss with your doctor, because all medications uh, have side effects. So. Uh, you should discuss with your doctor whether you're a good candidate for aspirin as a prevention for heart disease. What does this have in it that thins out the blood? What is like this process of the grill? What does it have in it that does that? What, what makes it thin blood? Well, it, uh, what it does is it uh, attaches to uh, cells called platelets, which are sticky cells that form clots, and it causes them not to stick together. And that's how it, uh, it, it blocks the clotting process and thins the blood by, by doing that. Okay. All right. Great. And each year, heart disease claims 16.7 million lives worldwide. Wow. That's a tremendous amount of people. Uh, out of that 16.7 million, how many would you think, uh, would you, if you put an estimate, were hereditary problems? Well, there are, there are a lot of risks for heart disease. Certainly, having heart disease in the family is, is a major risk. But uh, even if you have heart disease in your family, uh, doing the right things like not smoking, managing your blood pressure and cholesterol, eating well, and exercising can help you to mitigate that risk. But certainly family history of heart disease is an important risk factor. Okay, great. Okay, doctor, thank you very much for sharing this good news. Great, thank you. Thank you.